Missileers, they're the brave Air Force service members who keep watch over the U.S. nuclear missile arsenal, and they could be at increased risk of cancer due to their work after a roughly year-long U.S. Air Force medical service study has been conducted looking for possible links to that increased risk of cancer. In tonight's Prime Focus, ABC's Mola Lange reports from Colorado Springs on what sparked the concern and what researchers have discovered so far. It's a little-known role within the United States Air Force, critical to national security, a mission spent almost entirely underground and shrouded in secrecy. They're known as missileers, always on alert, keeping watch over the United States arsenal of Minuteman III nuclear ballistic missiles. Enough firepower capable of changing the course of humanity. Three, two, one, key turn. ABC News was given a rare look in 2014 inside a training simulator at F.E. Warren Air Force Base in Wyoming of what are known as Launch Control Centers, or LCCs, positioned far beneath the Earth's surface. Two other air bases with nuclear missiles, Maelstrom in Montana and Minot in North Dakota, also have units like these. But over the years, a mysterious threat has potentially emerged prompting medical investigations by the Air Force and the Pentagon, reports of cancer among dozens of former missileers. At the time, I was uh, 42. Okay. Retired Lieutenant Colonel Jason Boswell was a missileer assigned to Maelstrom Air Force Base between 2006 and 2007. Eight years later, after serving overseas... Uh, I was in the ER at 2 in the morning, and this it was an older doctor that came in and immediately knew what was wrong with me. He biopsied one of my lymph nodes and then uh, scheduled me for um, chemotherapy as soon as the results from the biopsy came back, hmm. which were positive for non Hodgkin's lymphoma. After multiple rounds of chemotherapy, he ultimately received a bone marrow transplant, leading to remission. But Boswell now suffers from graft versus host disease, a complication of that transplant. I have to be on immunosuppressants for that. It's a whole new fight. Yeah. According to his medical discharge papers, Boswell's lymphoma is considered a presumptive condition based on his time serving at El Udaid Air Base in Qatar. But after joining the Wounded Warrior Project as a mentor for others like him, he was paired with a fellow missileer he knew from Maelstrom, also suffering from non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. We started talking to our other friends and we learned about another missileer that had cancer. Who also, also served during that same time? Also served during that time, also had non-Hodgkin's mm. lymphoma. And pretty soon, you know, there's nearly a dozen of us. And we're like, how do we all have this same cancer? It's hard to this ignore. Is, this is not insignificant yeah. at all. Yeah. Um, and we need, to, we need to start voicing this and, and get people to listen. Cancer is the second leading cause of death in the United States, with more than 2 million people expected to be diagnosed this year, according to the American Cancer Society. Dr. William Dayhut with the Society says it's hard to know if any two people's cancers are connected. It's very difficult because oftentimes the cancers in the cluster are not as close related biologically as it's seen at first blush. Boswell's mentee, Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Seebeck, began searching for other missileers diagnosed with cancer and presented his initial findings to his superiors in 2023. He quickly discovered nine cases of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma among missileers in a 10-year span that overlapped Boswell and Seebeck's service years. The median age of diagnosis, 42. That, among a total group he believed to number in the hundreds, was concerning. Dr. Dayhut says those numbers are indeed unusual. Most non-Hodgkin's patients, he said, are over 65. I saw between ages of 20 and 40, only about 9,300 diagnoses a year. So with a median of 42, you know, that's certainly a large number of those folks. Seaback's findings prompted a group of fellow missileers to start the Torchlight Initiative, asking those in the missileer community to self-report cancers. To date, they say they've received reports of 56 cases of various types of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Nearly a third of them have been from Maelstrom. And so as we start having more and more conversations with fellow missileers, we were able to make those linkages um, that, that, um, that told us that something was, was not right. The Air Force conducted a study in 2001 over concerns of a cancer link to missileers' work exposure at Maelstrom. 
but found that the base was environmentally safe and there was not sufficient evidence to support a link. CBEX research, along with pressure from Montana Senator John Tester, who called on the DOD and Department of Veterans Affairs to act in this letter, led to Air Force leadership commissioning another medical study, searching for any links to a cause. The Air Force told ABC News its study is ongoing and finding a causation is difficult, but says the study so far has led to the discovery of polychlorinated biphenyls, or PCBs, on some surfaces within launch control centers at all three bases, Maelstrom, Minot, and Warren. Four out of 900 samples, two at Maelstrom and two at Minot, were found above the EPA limit, prompting cleanups within those LCCs. The Air Force saying all sites were immediately closed for safety and a multidisciplinary team of experts was gathered to include medical, EPA, engineers, etc., to develop and institute cleanup and mitigation procedures and retesting. Mitigation efforts continue to ensure we keep our airmen and guardians safe. The EPA lists PCBs as a probable carcinogen, though a direct link between PCBs and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma has not been established. In the late 1970s, the U.S. banned the production of PCBs, which were widely used in electronics manufacturing at the time. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is not really one disease. It's really a very, it's a combination of diseases which can manifest in, in similar ways, but actually are very different biologically. And despite the challenges facing researchers, the findings, including reports of other forms of cancers, has prompted the DOD to expand the study to now include investigating 14 additional types of cancer. In a statement, the commander of the Air Force Global Strike Command, Thomas Boussier, said, our leaders do not have to be a cancer survivor, like me, or be a parent of a child currently serving, like me, to take this issue incredibly seriously. That certainly helps with my motivation, but I want the leaders in the field to treat our people like they are their own son or daughter. Tell me about this. But while the results of the study are not expected until well into 2024 or beyond, Boswell is optimistic. It is important to have the leadership behind uh, the effort and encouraging um, openness and transparency uh, because that's the only way that we're going to, um, to get to the bottom of it. Of those original nine cases Seaback presented to his leadership, three have died. He was proud to serve the country, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, Montana is a rough place to be. It's a hard job. Missileers, yeah. just in general, they work, they work hard. Jenny Holmes' his husband, Mark, spent part of his time in the Air Force as a missileer. What was life like for him as a missileer? Before we were married, so even before I was in Montana with him, he did, I believe they were 36 hour alerts. And for those who don't know, that's basically a shift, right? That's one shift, yeah. yes. By the time we were married, um, and he still had two and a half years left, they switched him to 24 hour alerts. Mm -hmm. He would talk about feeling gross. So he would strip his clothes and he would get in the shower, yeah. like immediately. Mark's father, Dan, a retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel, was a missileer in the 1970s. I said to Mark that I thought the missile operations career field was the best non-rated career field in the Air Force. By the time my husband got there, he's like, we're using floppy disks. Right. You know, right. and that's what they're still using. And so it's just kind of like, it just felt ancient. After hearing from Mark about how little had changed with the system and the now grueling shifts that were required of him, Dan says his opinion of the field has changed. Had I known then what I know now, I would have told him, don't get anywhere near the missile business. Because my experience uh, 40 years ago had absolutely no relevance to what Mark would experience. But the worst experience was yet to come. In 2019, years after leaving active duty to become a reservist, Mark began to feel ill after a family vacation. He was jaundiced. And that's what triggered me to call the doctor's office immediately. Uh, something is wrong. Mark was diagnosed with an aggressive form of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. He endured several rounds of chemotherapy, which gave the Holmes family hope. But in January 2020, the cancer began to overwhelm his body. So from January to May 12th, it just kind of was like a steady decline. Um, you know, he went septic because he had been on so much chemo and antibiotics. 
And I do remember him calling and just saying like, I just want to come home. I was crying and my two older kids were asking me like, what's wrong? Is daddy going to be okay? And I think that was the first time that I told them like, you know, daddy's coming home and I think God's going to take him soon. And we just cried. <laughs> but that was really the first time that we just all broke down. Because I think we all envisioned a life without dad. After fighting non-Hodgkin's lymphoma for 16 months, Mark died in 2020 at the age of just 37, leaving behind Jenny and their three young children. Look at those Holmes has tried twice unsuccessfully to receive survivor's benefits from the VA. Two of Mark's doctors wrote letters saying his cancer was, in their opinion, caused by his exposure to carcinogens while working as a missileer. But proving the cancer was linked to Mark's service has been difficult. A recent VA expansion of health care benefits does not specifically cover a veteran simply for serving as a missileer. She now hopes the Air Force study will finally yield the missing link she and others have been searching for and hopes it will ultimately protect other missileers from suffering the same fate. You know, if we can save one person, right, then it would be worth it. Certainly an understandable desire there. Our thanks to Molo for that. In a recent virtual town hall, Air Force leaders said, in addition to the ongoing environmental survey, the first of five epidemiological review phases has been completed. They say they have not found an increased rate of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in this initial batch of data. What they say they have discovered, however, is data that, quote, appears to show trends suggesting a potential increased incidence for breast and prostate cancer in the missile community, while emphasizing that that picture Picture will not be complete until we complete all phases of this epidemiology review. Results from the study are expected to be complete this summer. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.